Welcome to Spit Bucket. Uh, we're here with Stuart Gregor again. We've uh, we've had Stuart on before. That was in his role with his own wines of Donny Goodmac, and today we've got him with. Uh, he has various roles in the wine industry. Uh, you're here with Yellow Glen. I am here with Yellow Glen. It's all about spring. It's a magnificent morning here, sitting by the harbour. Oh, Kenny's got his boat out the back here that we're about to go on a little bit of a I cruise wish. in. I and wish. it's all about spring, so it's sparkling wine. So we thought we'd better have a look at the Yellow Glen range. Yellow Glen's going to smash it up over over spring, basically. They've got a massive sponsorship of, the, of all the spring racing carnivals, both, you know, Randwick, you know, the VRC, Flemington, all that sort of stuff. I can see you in your little fascinator and your nice outfit heading off to the races. I haven't been to the Yellow. races in a very long time. It's all about Yellow Glen, Kenny. Right. So what you've got, we've got the, we're going to do the PN, what, what's known widely as the PNC, the Pinot Noir Sounds Chardonnay. like a political party. Yeah, like the ANC. Yeah, well, except for the... Or, or the parents and citizens. I wouldn't know. You know, oh, well, no, of course you wouldn't. But no. uh, it's a... Uh, the thing that I reckon is interesting about Yellow Glen, Yellow Glen's been going 40 years now, and Yellow Glen really pretty much mm. gave birth to... Australian premium, you know, it did. Up, upmarket sparkling wine. It did. So. It did. It, it was the first guys that actually got out of the using Sultana or Omdenk yeah. or Trebbiano and just pumping through stuff in giant tanks. Turned it into these two guys, um, Ian, Ian Home. Home and Dominic Londrigan from Londrigan. memory. Yep, yep, yep. They set up a little little tiny winery. If for those of you who weren't around then, not that we we're necessarily around 40 years ago, but. Uh, they set up this little tiny winery to make specialised sparkling. Now, Yellow Glen's obviously a massive brand now. Biggest it's selling sparkling wine in the country. Nothing like it. Yep. It's changed completely. But uh, And then it was bought by Blass, wasn't it? Was it yeah, Blass? Uh, yeah, Ray King bought it mm. uh, back in the early to mid-1980s. Uh, Dominic and Ian set it up in 69. It was always based in Ballarat. 69. 69 or right? 70, Se yep. Is that right? They, yeah, and okay. it was set up in Ballarat, and it was the first people to plant proper Pinot and Chardonnay and yeah. also go really hard on the cool climates. And he actually did set it up to be a table wine. He did make vineyard. some reds. Yeah, but they they never get them ripe. Because, I mean, Ballarat, yeah. that part of Ballarat where they were, Swisedale, yeah. was just, is the frost capital. See, they like Australia. climate change, don't they? Yes, they, they love it. But so the, the they first like the one, Germans. That's the 08 Pinot Noir Chardonnay. Do you like that one, Kenny? It's a, so it's it's a nice, crisp, classic, fresh. Classic Yellow Glen style. It's crisp, fresh, you know, ready to go. Mm. It's not too complicated. But it's all clean, you know, it doesn't have any of that nasty bitterness. It's not, it's not, it's not complicated at all, it's a, it's a mm. simple, easy drinking in a, in a very pleasant way. Mm. Just easy to, easy to glug. These are great ones. Mm. What price? Uh, 18 bucks okay. for the Pinot Noir Chardonnay, but obviously on promotion you'll get it a fair bit better than that. And Yellow Glen over spring, I have a suspicion there'll be a fair bit That'll of it going through the doors of uh, through, some yeah. of the larger retailers. Yep. What I've got here for you though, are a couple of pearls. Literally pearls. Literally pearls. I've got both pearls of wisdom. As well as pearls in the bottle. If you'd sat through the rating with him last <laughs> night, I can tell you there weren't many pearls of wisdom. We, we haven't had the best <laughs> night of our lives last <laughs> night, have we, Kenny? <laughs> I tell, oh. tell you what, the mighty, uh, the mighty Wallabies, they know how to break a heart or two, don't they? But We anyway, plan to be sitting here in Wallaby gear with scarves yes, and cheering yes. and um, too embarrassed. It's not going to happen anymore. Okay, so what we've got here is the white and the pink pearl, right? So both of these wines are from 2006. Mm -hmm. And these are the, this is the top of the Yellow Glen tree, Top I of suppose. the tree, yep. And these That's are wines, a more to it. bit got more complexity, mm. uh, longer time more on, length. Longer time on leaves, better fruit. I mean, these have got sort of exclusive... Cool climate fruit. So there's a lot of Adelaide Hills in that pearl. Mm. Pinot Chardonnay. Okay. So it's about um, it's about 60, 60, 40 Pinot Chardonnay. A lot of Adelaide Hills. Henty. Mm. You know some of those real cool climate areas that, of course, all the the Treasury wine estates have got access to now. Treasury wine estates, for those who aren't familiar with, is basically the whole conglomerate of the Fosters wine. Everything from the Penfolds to the mm. Wolf Blast to the Yellow Glens to the yeah. whatever real Coldstream Hills and yeah, many De many others. Devil's Lair and Winds Kurrawarra and. Do you want me to keep going? There's Please. a few of them, <laughs> but be here what it day. does, what that does, is gives you access to an incredible variety of great fruit. So, mm. these two wines, I think, this is a real, a proper Sanyo. Like this is almost exclusively Pinot. So it, it okay. would probably be called Bloc de Noir. It's Pinot Noir and a bit of Pinot Meunier. Yep. Right, and um, <clears throat> I just think this is such a pretty wine. Mm. And I think these wines mm. really give non-vintage French a, a dead set run. That one is a lovely one. That's got. Um, it's a raspberry up front, um, fresh, um, almost floral characters, and it's to me that's the pick so far. That's got lovely length. It just the keeps going, and going. It does, doesn't it? And mm. it does. It has real strawberry. Do yeah. I, am I hitting you too many times? Yeah, so? yeah. Um, <laughs> once got, it was too many times. Mm. I think you're right. It's got lovely acid. It's got lovely. It's got. It's really juicy, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. 
Now, I mean, imagine that on a summer's day, like today. It's magnificent. Um, just clean and fresh and, and full of fun. Yeah, oh, look, I'm going to be drinking that, you know, in my fascinator and my new uh, my new suit at the races. Obviously, yellow green What's are doing... What's a fascinator? It's a, it's a flower thing you have on the side of your head. Girls wear them, we don't wear them. But I'll be going to, it's Yellow Glen Ladies Day on George Main Stakes Day, and uh, I'll be off to that, and then I'm going to Oaks Day as well, which is all all ladies and me in the beautiful bird cage. At, so all ladies. Bird cage. All ladies, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very nice. Oh, <laughs> and I guess the final one. So be we, warned anyone going to Oaks Day. Well, there's 100,000 there, so they're unlikely to run into me. Oh. But it will be a good day. It will be a good day, but I'll tell you what. This is a whole new stock. This is this is a real growing category in sparkling wine in Australia at the moment, which is this Moscato style. It's, so it's had a massive, massive boost. It went from nothing. This, this sort of you've seen the Moscatos, a little bit of uh, fizz, a uh, little bit of sweetness, uh, some some in sort of in, in your seven fifty sparkling, yeah. but some just in normal bottles and very. Often low alcohol down at five percent. What are seven we seven and a half? Seven and a half for that one. So it works quite well. It, you know. It's had a huge boost, but there's a lot of talk about whether it can maintain it. Um, look at but that. it's a lovely, perfect summer sort of style. Yeah, for just have a look at that. I think that's a perfect uh, for mine. That's a brunch sparkling. Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's not too sweet. The thing I like about that is it's not a clean sweetness. No, but it's got. It's, you you wouldn't mistake. It's got plenty of sweetness there. So it'll be a, and a little bit of fizz. Almost exclusively, probably musket of Alexandria or something like that. I imagine or brown, or brown musket, that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. And it's a brown musket's a romantic grape name, isn't it? Yeah. No, they could brown have done better musket. than that. Mm. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, but that's a style I think for something like the races that works well if you're having a little champagne breakfast before you go to the track because it's not too heavy on the alcohol. So basically, you fizz before the fizz. You fizz before you fizz. I think you, you need to different. You need to delineate the day, the pre, during, and post. I think this is pre, and I think this is during. That's what you. That's what you. Yeah. You load up on when you've won. Uh, when you've backed the winner of the Oaks. Okay. Uh, I'd love to tell you who's going to win the Oaks, but I don't know it. But, but look, I think it's a beautiful range of wines. Uh, I'm happy to drink them over spring. And I think one of the things is that we've always got this idea that if we're going to go to the races and, and, and live it up large, that we've got to go for French champagne. But I particularly reckon these two in the middle here, if you... Uh, so they're about 28. They're about 30 bucks a bottle, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just under 30 bucks a bottle. I mean, if you were to pour them to people and ask, you know, they, that one, a lot of them would that's, think... That's my pick. Now, just quickly going ratings, I mean, that's a... To me, that's a sort of a nice 87, 88 pointer. Yep. That's an couple more that that's definitely a 90 pointer i reckon yeah that's in the 90. That a 90 and that's oh, just it's more than 90. well you're a very generous man of course i'm a very generous man and i do their pr Stu and i used to write a book <laughs> <laughs> well he used to write it and i used to give him the notes yeah. um and the last one that's that's a nice 86 87 mm. just as a, as a and what's that about 10 bucks oh yeah no no about 15 bucks 15. again this yeah. one Okay. But there are others, you know, there's that yellow range of wines as well, yellow, pink, red, That's right. white. Yeah. Well, we've got a few others here we haven't opened. Less. Um, what a beautiful day. Yet. Um, we're waiting until the camera goes off. Uh, absolutely. Anything else you want to tell us about Yellow Glen? No, drink more Yellow Glen and back a lot of winning horses over spring. And it's all about the you can dream girls. We've got a wonderful, too. beautiful new um, advertising campaign about to come out too. The most gorgeous girls. They've got real girls mm -hmm. modelling... Um, for Yellow Glen, because it's a bit about... Real it. girls as opposed to fake girls. Fake model girls, Oh, yeah. okay, okay. No, yeah. so Yellow Glen's about, you know, making the very, very best that you possibly can out of great Aussie fruit. I Is think it's... Delicious. Anything coming up that we should know about with Yellow Glen? Anything exciting? Or you can't tell us? I can't tell you, but there is a, there is a new musket style called White that's right. about to be launched, and I think that could be a bit of a smash this summer. White that'll match yellow, you know, and red and pink. If you haven't heard it before, you heard it here You've first. heard it now. Yeah, no one's heard that. Oh, there you are. Okay. Exclusive. Thank you, Ken. Stuart Gregor. Thank you from Spit Bucket. Uh, any uh, thoughts, comments, uh, criticisms, suggestions, please uh, drop us a note. Okay, and in the absence of the palate of the people, our mate Rob, uh, I'm here to tell you that we spit so you don't have to. Although he doesn't. I did a little bit. I didn't see you spit once. One, oh. maybe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>